Welcome to Sarah Tech's Engineering and Product Development Insights webinar on using CFD analysis to solve complex product development issues. My name is Sarah Utsugi and I'm your host today. This webinar is part of a series of pre presenting this year focusing on ways companies can improve their engineering and product development process. Today our speaker is Mark Decker. Mark has over 14 years of experience as a CFD consultant with eight plus years as the owner and operator of a CFD services company. He also has prior CAD and FEA experience working for Pro Engineer SolidWorks in Al Gore. Mark holds a bachelor's in mechanical engineering from Michigan Tech University. Now I'll pass the presentation over to Mark. Thank you, Sarah, for that introduction. The focus for this webinar will be on the basics and benefits of CFD in improving product performance, along with taking advantage of CFD consulting services. So CFD, well, CFD stands for computational fluid dynamics, which is the simulation of both fluid flow and heat transfer. So as an example, let's take a look at a heat sink. Now the heat sink conducts thermal energy and then transfers it to the surrounding fluid, in this case air, through convection. So with CFD, your product, along with its physical environment, including the fluid in or around it, is modeled virtually in the computer. The CFD software processes these inputs and in return provides detailed heat transfer and fluid flow results using Navier-Stokes equations. Now, for those of you familiar with FEA structural analysis, such as that found in FEMAP and NASTRAN, the process is very similar, except the underlying physics and inputs are different, and the fluid has to be modeled and meshed along with the solid parts. So what does CFD do across the industry? Well, it covers a broad range of application, and those can include electronics cooling as a very popular application, and although this is electronics, you can also think of any type of application that needs to be heated or cooled uh, with a fluid, whether that's air or a gas such as air. Other applications, flow control devices. And there's a wide variety of these ranging from anything from valves manifolds, pipelines, pumps, or any other kind of flow distribution systems um, where pressure drop and flow distribution are important parameters in the design. Another popular space is automotive and aerospace. Here's a few examples here, and just in a little bit, I'm gonna do a deep dive on these two applications further. And finally, we have building spaces. So think about this for a second. To really test a building, you have to have built it already. Um, so I do a lot of simulations like these for manufacturing centers, clean rooms, data centers, operating rooms, where the airflow is critical and it's really important to get it right up front before you break ground on the building because it's a lot harder to retrofit or repair mistakes that were made once the building has been put up. Now, I just want to take a moment and note that this is just a small sampling of some of the popular applications. There are many, many others that CFD can address. So why invest in CFD? Well, one approach you have, there's several alternatives when you have a design problem to address. So one thing you can lean on is closed form solutions, textbook calculations, spreadsheets, et cetera. And if you have a, a basic application for which there are hand calculations, then this might get you pretty close to what you need. But what if your applications are more complex where there are no hand calculations 
um, or empirical data to draw off of. Um, and along with this, these can be kind of limited in insight. So they might be able to dial you in. And then another thing I'll touch upon is that a lot of CAD programs offer basic thermal analysis wizards. So they might offer what's called a conduction only thermal simulation, which again, shares some of the same limitations in as the hand calculations and not directly accounting for the fluid. So when you have a design issue, another aspect to consider is actual physical testing of the product. And this can be very accurate, if, assuming that the instruments are calibrated correctly and that the testing is done properly. But one implication is that it requires an actual part to test. Now, if the part is pretty simple, um, simple weldment, well, that's not, a, not such a big deal. But if it's a complex casting or machining, or if it's very large, um, that can be kind of expensive to do all that. Or if the, if the testing rig is complex. And what we're going to see is a reoccurring theme on testing in wind tunnels and the implications of that. So that's the other alternative. Where CFD comes in is that it can provide that detailed insight, and yet it doesn't need an actual physical part. So by doing CFD earlier in the design process, you can sort out the designs, the issues with the performance, sort all that out, and then perhaps only have to use physical testing as a last step validation. Um, and that can end up saving a lot of time and money in the long run for a lot of applications. Let's do a deep dive into some automotive applications. And then we'll follow that up with some aerospace. And I'm just touching upon these two verticals for this webinar. Of course, there's a lot of other applications that if you reach out to Saratech, um, we can help you address your specific application. Um, and how CFD can help. So with automotive, the first thing that usually comes to mind is aerodynamics and trying to streamline the car, determining the drag on the car. And usually that requires two things, right? You need an actual representation of the car to be built, uh, whether it's a scale model or not, and then Finally, you need a wind tunnel to test it in. And scheduling that and putting it into the wind tunnel and doing all the measurements can, again, take time and money. Whereas with CFD, that representation of the car can be modeled virtually in CAD, and then the CFD solver can process those same results. Now, there's other applications as well. And this is uh, another example of sort of like building spaces, but this is much smaller. It's the cockpit space of the car. So in this case, um, they do a lot of simulations on the dashboard venting to make sure that the passengers are comfortable with respect to whether it's cool or warming air, how fast that air is blowing across their body, which would dictate personal comfort. And these little vents, if you ever looked at them, they're pretty complex moldings. So to have parts molded, if you're doing what if scenarios for, for a new car design, that can become kind of costly and time consuming to test. Whereas with CFD, that could be modeled virtually. And then sometimes with simulation, it's not really about the product itself but it's more about the environment that the product is in. In this case, the car is going along for the ride, but the actual study is for a paint booth in how uniform and laminar the flow is. So this animation is a car being transported transiently down a rack. Now for a case study, we can look at Hendrix Motorsports NASCAR team. So keeping with the aerodynamics team, 
they do a lot of CFD to look at changes to the design of the car, I guess keeping it within the laws allowed by NASCAR of what they can do. But when they do that, they can first do it in CFD. And what they've already done is they've gained confidence in CFD because they were actually able to correlate the virtual CFD data with the data they were getting in the wind tunnel. So again, just saving time and money overall. Now let's take a look at aerospace. So again, the first thing that comes to mind is drag. So aerodynamic drag and lift in the case of a wing. And same challenges as a car, except big, bigger planes require even bigger wind tunnels, which cost even more um, than the cars do. So it's, it's a bigger expense where CFD can help iron out that design and save time and money. So aerodynamics, another application would be engines. And same thing with the automotive. You can look at engines, whether it's the coolant. The radiators, the coolant, the coolant passages, the pumps in the engine are all possible applications as components of an automotive or aerospace engine. And in this case, I'm also showing off the capability of doing things in motion like fans, pumps, and impellers, or in this case, a propeller blade. So a transient motion analysis of a solid object moving through a fluid. And then finally, this application for aerospace is that components such as antennas or other devices, winglets that they mount on the planes have to be FAA certified as well to make sure they don't fall off. Or if they do fall off, they're not going to get sucked up into an engine or somehow or other impair the normal flight characteristics. So in this example, we have an antenna mounted on the top of the rear passenger compartment. And for this particular analysis, it's transit as well, where the plane is being, is being dynamically rotated through a pitch. And the dynamic chart here shows you how that pitch changes relative to the pitch angle of the plane. So just another application of components that get added to the planes post design of the original plane. And another case study here of a company using CFD software is TLG Aerospace. And it helps them really expedite the process of obtaining these FAA certificates when they're bringing a new plane to market or a redesign of a plane or modification of a plane. And with this case study, one thing they alluded to is that a wind tunnel for these types of planes can cost $100,000 or more for a single session. So that's the type of money that we can be talking about when you're referring to um, large high speed wind tunnels. Okay, so let's say this, uh, this, this overview of CFD simulation, and in the future we plan on probably doing more deep dives of CFD and getting more technical um, with the use of CFD. But in this case, you might be viewing the webinar and saying, well, you know, my company or my design team could benefit from the insight that CFD can provide and, and save us some money and, and help us be more competitive in the market space. Well, it really boils down to you have two solutions that you can consider. You have software or you have services. So little decision tree here is trying to figure out which one's gonna be best for your company. 
So if you need results right away, and as a consultant, I'm not, you know, sometimes I get calls on Friday and they need results Monday. That's how critical they, they wait till it's almost too late. But if you need results really fast, then services is really the only call. Otherwise, if you have some time to evaluate which software is going to be correct for you, purchase the software, get trained and get proficient before you need results, then software might be the better choice. We can then move on to the next step is internal resources. And in my years as a consultant, I also did a lot of CFD training for companies that adopted the software. And this is probably the biggest obstacle. So you really have to be honest about the availability of internal resources. Um, do they have the time to get trained and to maintain that proficiency over time? Or is the software just going to become shelfware because you're just too busy with meetings or putting out fires at on-site facilities? Um, if so, then software could still work and be the right choice. If not, then you might want to consider services. And one more checkbox here is how frequent are you going to use it? If you're only going to use it one or two projects a year, that's your, you have a long design cycle or maybe the applications that have fluid flow implications just don't come up that often for your company, then CFD services would probably be not only more economical, but would free up your time to do other things. Because um, it would be hard to stay proficient with the software if you're not utilizing it that often. But if you're going to be using it every week or a couple times a month, then chances are good you'd probably get a good return on your investment if you chose to go through CFD software and training. Now, these are just a few of the considerations. Um, others include how complex the application is, if you have experience with that type of physics. But either way, Saratech could help you evaluate which path software or CFD services would be best for your design team. Okay, last topic here that I'm gonna expand on and then Sarah can open it up for uh, any follow-up questions. So with CFD services, these are typically delivered remotely through web meetings. And that just saves time and money. So it's very effective for us to get, just like we're on a web meeting right now, this is a webinar, but the web meetings are the same. You can share your desktop and models. I can share mine and, and provide the results and, and then get back on our days and I can get back on the project and share results like that. So it's in a very efficient model um, that I use almost exclusively these days. And the process starts off with a what I call a scoping meeting. Um, no obligation is that you reach out to Sarah Tech or the salesperson, or maybe you're talking to one of the FEMAP application engineers and you say, you find out you have some fluid flow or heat transfer issues that need addressed sooner rather than later. We jump on a webinar and um, you can send the models to me or you can pull them up on your end. And then I need to know things like, uh, you know, the, the CAD model, obviously how complex it is, what physics are going to be involved but also your objectives, what you're trying to learn, and the timeline, how fast do you need these results. And then things like operating conditions as well would fall out later. Um, but you share that type of information, and then based upon my experience with just doing hundreds of pro projects like this, I can come back and usually try to give you, you know, you know, and the other thing I missed out there was budget. So budget always plays a role. So when things become very complex physics, that increased complexity usually means more time for me to get it done, which means more money. And, but I can always try to come up with options to try to give you the insight you need and hopefully meet any budget restrictions you have. So providing you with options and then coming up with a statement of work and a proposal that's going to detail the approach, the assumptions we're going to make together, you know, and this is a collaboration where I'm just not, I just don't go off 
and disappear for a while and show up with results. It's a collaboration, you know, to get clarity and and uh, work together because you're the pro- you're the expert with that particular product and application. And you also know the restrictions you're under with respect to um, how uh, with aesthetics or manufacturability or serviceability. And then I can come up with a cost and then how fast I can expedite those results to you. And then once we get the paperwork all squared away and the PO is in, I can jump in and start providing insight right away. And again, that includes deciphering what the CFD results are showing you. So the velocity profiles, the pressure maps, the streamlines, contours, et cetera. What are these trying to tell us? You know, what should we change for, you know, if there's going to be a a next iteration, what can be changed? And this, re- this includes, the process includes live results reviews. So whenever I have results ready, I'll send you some images and throw out the option, hey, do you want to jump on a web meeting and talk about these in more detail? Or are the images enough for now? And then when everything's all wrapped up, I like to um, document that for posterity in a comprehensive report that gives all the inputs, all the findings, and all the results so that you could rely upon them later for a similar product in the future. Okay, that concludes the formal presentation of the webinar. And I appreciate your attention and possibly look forward to collaborating with your team as well. Uh, Let me pull these. uh, Sarah has a few more slides to share with you. Yep. And then we'll address any questions you might have. Thanks, Mark. I think everyone was able to learn a lot from today's presentation. Um, So just to talk a little bit about Ceratech, um, as an engineering company, we hope you can see that Ceratech is focused on helping our customers realize better products, develop better product development experiences. We're here to help you optimize, eliminate redundancies, and create better processes. So if you need help solving engineering problems, please reach please reach out to us, whether it's analysis, design, data management, or process improvement. Our team is ready and able to assist. We work with companies in all major industries from aerospace to marine and energy. We do small projects and major implementations, helping many companies realize better products, again, by improving their product development experiences. So we're here to help, and we're glad you could all join us today. Now we'll enter the Q&A portion of the webcast. If you have any questions, please go ahead and enter them in the questions box. We do have a few questions, so we'll get into those. The first question is, how long does a CFD services project typically take? Let me go ahead and answer that question. So that's a a good question, is how long does CFD services normally take? Well, that could be, um, it's a tough one to answer because it's based on complexity. Um, for the most part, is it is it a simple sem- simple part or simple assembly, or is it, is it does it have hundreds of components, and is it very large? Is it complex physics? But I would say typically, for most applications, everything's done within a week. Especially for the customers that are really need results fast, is that I can get the model and turn around results for most applications within a matter of just a few days, if need be. Um, so again, that's part of the process. And that's one of the first things you'll find out on the scoping calls. Once I lay eyes on the model and understand what some of your objectives are, I can use my past experience with doing hundreds of these projects and giving you some accurate timelines of whether one or two days is realistic or no, that's going to take me the better part of a week for me to sort that all out. The next question we have is, uh, what other applications can CFD address? That's a good one, and that's uh, just in time. So it runs the gamut. There's things that, you know, for example, you can start to get into chemical reactions, combustion. there's all these niche areas. One, one thing that you wouldn't think is associated with fluid flow, but this application is actually little pills on a conveyor belt 
uh, using something called that the more advanced CFD codes have called the discrete element method. So that's something that even though there's error there, it's more about, you know, development has come up with efficient means of tracking all of these different particles. Here's another exam, example coming up of a screw conveyor. So it's extruding these solid pellets and distributing them. Um, this example here is for safety where uh, egress from burning buildings. So this is a transient simulation where a fire has been initiated in this room with soot and smoke. And we can track that soot density. And, you know, the building codes have certain requirements for like how long is that, is that type of fire existed before it would cover up the exit signs or the hallways or stairways. Um, so that's another example of an application. This is a flow control method where I'm changing, I'm dynamically changing the heights of the baffles here. And as a result, you're going to see with increased pressure drop because of the restriction of the flow that eventually the temperature non-uniformity at the exit becomes much more uniform at the expense of pressure drop. So for a lot of companies, they try to find a happy balance between these two because they want to have a uniform mixture at the outlet, um, but they also don't want too much pressure drop because more pressure drop means bigger pumps and more energy to run those pumps. And here's another one with a, uh, a Savonius turbine in which air is blowing over this and spinning the turbine. And what you're seeing on the dynamic chart here is it's actually RPM rate as it goes. And then this is the video that we'd seen before with the moving car. And again, time just does not allow to go into all the other details of things that CFD applications. You know, one that just came to mind is I did a simulation of blood flowing through your veins. Um, which is a special type of fluid called non-Newtonian. Um, so that's just an, another example of where CFD has been used in, in, in industries. Thanks. The last question we have is how accurate is CFD compared to actual results? Okay, that's another good question. Um, again, a lot of that depends upon the... Um, the accuracy of the inputs as well as the user. So if you're going to adopt CFD software, you have to become familiar with the inputs and physics involved. Um, or even like for some of you that have FEA backgrounds, you know that the mesh is important when you're looking at the accuracy results. So the same thing with CFD, the meshing is important as well. Um, as we saw before with the case study, Hendrix found that their results correlated with wind tunnel. And I'd have to say that when the CFD as a tool is used properly, it'll compare favorably, you know, within a few percentage points of that. Now, some applications are really complex and you might not have a lot of data or test data on. So sometimes we rely more upon a what's called a qualitative assessment rather than quantitative, where quantitative is you're trying to dial it in very, very close. Um, but a lot of times that can be cost prohibitive of investing that much time and turning it into a research project when all you really need is a qualitative ass assessment to say, hey, is this better or worse than the previous iteration? So again, that's something that is evaluated and um, talked about during the scoping meeting. But overall, when used properly, um, it compares very favorably with known test data. Great. It, look, it looks like that's all the questions we have for today. Um, but as a reminder, if you have any additional questions or comments after the webinar, please feel free to email us at info at .com. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you, Mark, and have a great day. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information.
And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.